I could have your attention, please. We'll get things underway now. So if I could ask to the stage the Chairman of the Guernsey Sports Commission, Stuart Fuller. Thank you. Welcome, everybody, to uh, Beausajour on uh, what is not a bad day, but we've had a wonderful summer, and it's a shame that the summer didn't quite continue for the Battle of Britain Day. So Sports Commission don't have lots of money to spend, so therefore we're very pleased to tag on the back of the uh, Battle of Britain and make out we organise the display just for today, and just to welcome our special guest, uh, who you're going to hear all about in a moment with the bailiff, and the daughters of our other uh, inductee today. Behind me you'll see around the walls uh, 17 other people that have been added to our sporting heroes and today we're welcoming two new members. Uh, if you get the chance after we finish to go and have a look, it's a good read. There are 17 people that deserve to be up there and as I say we're very pleased to add a further two. There are people that are competing currently all around the world, literally, that have got Guernsey heritage. And I'm sure that when they come towards the end of their careers, sorry, I'm not suggesting Carl's at the end of his career, sorry in case that uh, comes over the wrong way, but when you've won a couple of gold medals, you do deserve to get up there. We have people literally all around the world and in a whole range of sports, but uh, today is the first time we're inducting anybody that has uh, who specialise in equestrianism and hockey. So we're pleased to broaden those uh, sports that we're honouring. You'll see quite a few footballers up there and a couple of golfers and uh, a few track athletes. But uh, here we have an opportunity to broaden that. Guernsey's got a fantastic and rich sporting heritage and all the work of my fellow commissioners and the staff within the commission are doing everything we can to make sure that heritage continues and continues at the strength that is currently showing. You're going to come over for us for lunch later, some of you, and uh, there you'll have the opportunity to listen to Carl, and you'll have the opportunity, if it all works out well, to see the red arrows as well. So we're going to knit in the red arrows, so you're going to be asked to move on very quickly when we finish these bits here, so that we can get our lunch started. So with no further ado, can I ask you to welcome our bailiff, Richard Collis. Special guests, ladies and gentlemen, inauguration into the Sporting Hall of Fame is perhaps one of the great or the greatest honour that can be bestowed upon one of our local sportsmen by their fellow community, and it therefore gives me very great pleasure to read to you the two citations, and these are the citations that appear uh, on the um, portraits that will be unveiled shortly. First of all, Carl Hester, MBE. The citation reads: Carl was born in 1967 and spent his childhood in Sark. He was educated at Elizabeth College in Guernsey. Carl first learned to ride at a young age in Sark on a donkey. Later he drove a carriage on the island. At 16 he moved to the UK where he worked at the Fortune Centre of Riding Therapy in Dorset, where adults with disabilities can learn to ride. Although Carl started out competing in eventing, he moved to dressage and became young rider national dressage champion in 1985. He was selected for the British young rider team in 1988. Carl has been incredibly successful in his competitive career and is highly regarded as one of the top dressage trainers in the world with a lengthy high profile list of clients. He's a columnist for Horse and Hound magazine and has also written several books on dressage. He has competed in four Olympic Games, Athens, Sydney, Barcelona and London. He was selected for the team in Beijing in 2008, however injury to his horse, Delendo, prevented him from competing. As a member of the Great Britain dressage team, highlights of Carl's career to date include 2012 London Olympics, team gold medal. Britain's first ever Olympic dressage medal. 2011 European Dressage Championships in Rotterdam, team gold medal, winner of two individual silver medals. 2010 World Equestrian Games in Kentucky, team silver medal. 2009 European Dressage Championships at Windsor, team silver medal. 
He has won 63 national championship titles, including seven national Grand Prix titles. Owner and trainer of European individual gold medalist Vallegro, written for him by Charlotte Dujardin. Carl Hester is the most successful British dressage rider in history to date. And what does... What the citation doesn't say is that through Carl's achievements and successes, he has greatly increased public awareness of the sport and appreciation of dressage. I had the pleasure to be in London during the 2012 Olympics, and it was noteworthy that everyone was taking interest in the GB dressage team and their achievements in the remarkable equestrian arena in Greenwich Park. I have no doubt that Carl's achievements extend way beyond his personal successes and that the sport of dressage as a whole has been greatly enriched by the contribution he has made to it. He is indeed a very worthy addition to the Sporting Hall of Fame. And it now gives me very great pleasure to unveil his... Next, I will read the citation for Mary Russell Vick, OBE. Mary Russell Vick, née de Putrin, was an international hockey player who played for England between 1946 and 1953. She played in 30 matches and scored 70 7 0 goals. Mary was born in Guernsey in 1922. At the age of eight, she attended her aunt's boarding school in Bexhill, Sussex. She excelled at all sports, but particularly hockey and tennis. She was picked for the Sussex second 11 team in 1938 when she was 16. She also played in the Great Britain Junior Tennis Tournament in 1938. She attended Oxford University in 1940 and played first team hockey, tennis, cricket and squash, gaining four blues. Mary married Clive Russell Vick, brother of her friend in the hockey team, in 1944. She was part of the successful England women's hockey team that won the Women's World Hockey Championship in the Netherlands in 1948. Medals were strictly forbidden as it was an amateur sport, but the England team sneaked the medals home in their suitcases. On retiring from hockey, Mary was asked to represent the South on the All England Coaching Subcommittee and soon became chair. She later joined the executive committee of the All England Women's Hockey Association. She became vice president in 1971 and president in 1976 for 10 years. A highlight was hosting the Queen for the annual international match at Wembley 1981. Her greatest achievement was the introduction of junior teams, the under 21 and under 18, plus the introduction of clubs, schools and indoor championships. In 1979, Mary became secretary of the Great Britain Women's Hockey Board, and she was involved in the negotiations with Scotland, Wales, and Ireland to form a GB team. She became chairman and continued in this capacity, attending the Seoul and Barcelona Olympics, where the GB women won a bronze medal. She retired in 1993. Mary was awarded an OB in 1980 for her services to hockey administration. Mary died in 2012, aged 89, leaving three daughters, four grandchildren, and six great-grandchildren. That's the citation. As you've heard, Mary Vick's achievements are phenomenal. In this age of sexual equality, it's difficult to appreciate that when she began her academic studies and her sporting career, women were in many ways regarded as second-class citizens. Few women went to university. There weren't many places available for them. As for sport, there were even fewer opportunities as sport was heavily male-oriented. Throughout her career and through her leadership, Mary Vick worked to raise the profile of women's sport, and that perhaps is her lasting legacy. And it gives me very great pleasure to unveil her part.
Christabel Fukunji, Richard Collis. Thank you very much indeed. If I could ask Christabel Russellvik and Carl Hester to step forward. Right, Christabel, we'll start with you ladies first. Um, what would your mother have made of all this? Well, last January there was an article in the Guernsey Press and my aunt sent it to me and I showed it to my mother and said, how do you feel about being remembered by Guernsey some 60 years later? And she also said, well, I don't know about that. She was very modest about her achievements, but she was always a strong believer in Guernsey and always supported Guernsey whenever she could, even if it was only in her armchair watching the Commonwealth Games. <laughs> I mean, as we heard, she, she moved away from Guernsey, I think she started boarding school at the age of seven. Did she still have very strong links with the island? Yes, she lived here basically until she was 17. So she came back for school holidays. And the last holiday she came back was Easter 1940, after the First World War had started. Se sorry, Second World War, but before um, Guernsey was occupied. And that was um, bittersweet, I think, because her brother went off to um, fight in the military and actually he never came back. Um, but my grandmother and grandfather were here all during the occupation. And after the, the war was over, my mother, far from being 17, was now 22, married and had a young child. And we came over here every year to visit my grandmother. Um, my grandfather died in 1950. And um, she just regaled us with all the stories of her youth, including playing golf on the course at Longcrest, when, unfortunately, they reached the ninth hole and they ran out of golf balls because they'd lost them all in the gorse bushes. <laughs> Well, I can certainly sympathise with that. Well, we'll talk some more about your mother, who was clearly a remarkable woman a little later. Uh, Carl Hester, what do you think? Have they got the lightness about right? I think that might have been painted when I was at the high stress of the Olympics. Um, I don't look particularly happy, considering I've got a medal around my neck, but it's, of course, fantastic. Thank you very much. How do you feel about this? I mean, you've, we've heard your list of remarkable achievements. Being added to the Guernsey Sporting Hall of Fame, how does that rank? Um, well, it's a huge honour, and I think particularly, um, as we already heard, I mean, for those of us sometimes that want to follow, um, you know, uh, certainly an Olympic career, we have to move away to actually follow your dreams and to train. And um, so, for me, I had to leave the Channel Islands, where I thought I would probably live for the rest of my life. Um, but I had to make a decision, and I had to go and um, train, like a lot of people do. And the fact that now um, I am being honoured in this way uh, is just still makes me feel part of the islands which is what I've always wanted to be and um, for that I'm very happy about it. It's always wonderful to come back and uh, I think I always will. Now we've got a, a lot of young people here. You've talked about what you had to do to, to achieve in your sport. What would your advice be to young people here who might want to achieve at the top level of their chosen sport in years to come? Yeah, I mean, the main thing is you obviously can't be afraid to go away. And, um, you know, the Channel Islands is a wonderful place, but sometimes you do have to move to follow your dreams and to, and to be the best. And, you know, that's something that can be quite hard to understand, obviously, when you're young. But you can always come back. There are aeroplanes and there are boats. <laughs> and they always run every day back to the Channel Islands. So if you get homesick, you can come home. Um, but my advice is, you know, I, I wasn't sporty when I was... Um, young and uh, I went to Elizabeth College as you know and that's uh, very much a sports school and um, you know I know what it feels like to always be put in goal uh, <laughs> because I couldn't kick the ball so um, you know the fact that I've uh, been at the bottom of the sporting school curriculum meant nothing to me because I always knew what I wanted to do I wanted to work with horses I wanted to go to the Olympics and uh, it did take me over 20 years to get there but obviously it's worth it. So um, there is, you can wait a very long time, but still achieve it. Well, as a goalkeeper, I'll try not to take too much offence to that. Uh, Carl Hester, thank you very much indeed. Mary Russellvick, uh, sorry, Christopher Russellvick. Right, we'll continue this uh, conversation at more length at the hotel. Uh, we've heard a little bit about the planes. Obviously, the Red Arrows were hoping to work into the schedule, um, which is quite tight. So if I could ask you to make your way across to the Duke of Richmond Hotel as quickly as you can. Uh, there is a path across Cambridge Park. If you come out of the front of the centre and turn left, you can walk across Cambridge Park, which is probably the quickest and given town traffic safest route. And I look forward to seeing you all at the Duke of Richmond. <laughs>